<clears throat> hey, hey, happy day. Uh, namaste. So there are very many messages that came through this week and I was unable to do videos for them because of uh, the noise and distractions going on in my background. So I've done what I can. However, more has come through today, so I'm just going to tackle it all in one video and let's see how it comes together. And um, what I'll start with is um, I'll start with today, the thing that happened the most recent. And that is one of the things I've noticed in my life is that there are often um, bees in my direct area or in my environment and people who spend time with me will attest to this um, and I always recognize it as the sign that work is coming or that um, there will be projects or tasks to undertake and um, I wanted to show you an example of why I see a bee as that and it's because of um, the Destiny card deck, um, the work, so I pulled a card, just uh, the first card that I could see that had the symbol, and it turned out, oh, it wasn't this one, it was this one, my apologies, uh, spoiler alert, um, and so uh, there is the B, and in the Destiny uh, deck, it refers to work, and basically um, the expression of who you are um, is what that has to do with. And I love the yellow um, because what happened was I was watching this bee and um, it landed on a flower at my doorstep. And I was watching the bee on this flower and I suddenly understood a way to describe the, sec uh, the solar plexus chakra, or sh the chakras, and then particularly the solar plexus chakra, because yellow is the color of that chakra. And then what came to mind was that over and above that, that we are currently in the Lionsgate portal. 8-8 um, eight, eight is on Monday, and that will be the peak, the midpoint. So it opened up about... Um, I think it's like about 10 days ago and then it will continue to be open for another about 10 days after that, 10 to 12 days and then it will close and the landscape portal um, so the in astrology we are currently in Leo season so anyone who is born in this month is celebrating a birthday and they will be a Leo and the um planet for Leo is the sun and really on this planet earth without the sun uh, life wouldn't exist so it's also the solar plexus color it's the planet for solar plexus and the color of solar plexus yellow um, and it's really about will and will power and divine will um, and really about um, our personal power so we have to do a self-confidence and self-esteem essentially um, and if you think about a sunflower that would kind of be um, I guess <laughs> uh, the easiest way for you to imagine it but then let's talk about chakras quickly in that chakras the word chakra basic basically means a vortex of energy and um, in the center of your being, you have a channel, you actually have three, but we'll just simplify it and put them all into one. It would be like a straw, and it would be your uh, straw of light that connects to the earth star. So you're being grounded um, by gravity and all dense matter, primal um, things we need. We need to eat, we need to breathe, we need water, you know. So uh, living on everything tangible, dense energy. Uh, that exists on that on the, your ground star level and then your channel goes up and it uh, connects with your north star which is your higher being everything that is higher it's almost the point where you meet 
your divine and the divine the, the divine and where it is channeled into you as a sacred divine divine being so as you can see it has a narrow point here so that would be the part of the chakra that plugs into that channel of light and then you can see it gets wider so the vortex uh, spin gets wider so it also becomes a little bit more diffuse in color if you could see clearly you would see that the end here is like a mustard yellow and then the ends are quite a bright yellow and then inside there are little filaments uh, that contain the pollen so those would be the aspects of your chakras that go out on that chakra's behalf and you're being almost like a neural network or a fascia network of an invisible energetic kind and it goes out always and explores your environment all your chakras almost do that like a little octopus and um feel out your environment and people and uh, transfer energetically that information back to your system so in the same way your nervous system through your senses would feed back into your physiology and then tell your body how to work better or the systems accordingly if you're in a fight or flight state you would need um, your functioning to narrow down into a tunnel vision uh, and operational state of being where all you have the capacity to do is be ready to fight or run or fright um, so uh, that is a very dense state of being that fear state um, so yes the chakras I love how the petals open up at the end so it kind of shows how that's how you through the chakra um, engage with the world and then how it you engage with the world so uh, that just quickly very summary on chakras and um, the aura and the, that connection then creates this torus of energy around you and a torus is like a donut in shape and you are the whole the center of the donut and that channel that I spoke about of energy and light um, that goes is the sum total of all your chakra activities and your ability to balance body mind and spirit head heart gut and um, when those are all in alignment you are uh, uh, the the sum that is greater uh, than the sum of the parts and um, so chakras and so yes it's what you put back out into the world from what you need to learn and project out and is mirrored back and then you take it in at that chakra level that you need to develop and uh, that's how you do uh, some basic chakra lesson work um, so I showed you the no before we go there see there's so much I'm just trying to feel out how to plug it all in into one cohesive message one of the things you'll notice is that there is a lot of yellow and uh, what I find interesting is I've been talking to people a lot about the number four because of the north node of the moon being in Taurus, which is very much a four number, which is about uh, foundations, stability, security. It's the four corners of your temple and the four pillars of your temple and the four compass points, north, south, east, west. And um, north, south, <laughs> Um, east, west. Uh, so I, what I loved about this card coming out is that it was number four and then exactly now in this Lionsgate portal we are supposed to be finding our niche. That's our willpower, our driving force. It's like the sun. It makes things grow. So we are in the, uh, the Lionsgate portal is what it essentially means is that our sun and perhaps what I say now it is kind of controversial but if you're open to just listening you don't have to adopt this ideology you just have to listen so you can understand uh, why I'm making my case in the way I am so our star most stars have a partner a twin star um, called a binary uh, star 
and the binary star for our uh, sun that powers everything on this planet is Sirius. And Sirius uh, is called uh, the dog star. It's one of the brightest stars. And particularly at this time of year, mid-year, when the sun is um, certainly in the northern hemisphere at its brightest, being the summer months. And we, um, July, we've passed our mid-year uh, solar balance of day and night. And in the northern hemisphere, it is now moving towards the winter. So the sun is at its most powerful uh, state there now. And um, so uh, we are, are encouraged, uh, the Sphinx face, when it was built, was built to face the Leo constellation. Um, and there's some pair of Sirius in that. Anyway, so it really is about finding uh, your inner star and your inner light, which is about finding your niche. And I happen to be talking to someone this morning, not only about four, but also about Alice in Wonderland, how I feel like um, I live life uh, like Alice in Wonderland. And I run down all kinds of portals and I'm curious and uh, fascinated by all aspects of being body, mind and spirit. And so um, this quote says, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to walk from here, asked Alice. That depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. And right next to me over here on the table is my uh, companion cat, Boo. So this is exactly it. It's, we're trying to figure our way forward, but we really need to focus on uh, pegging our tents, the, each corner of the tent to secure it. The foundations are where we need to be focused now, making sure the soil is prepared, making sure we have everything we need to look after the ground, the correct seed, uh, all the right ways to fertilize it. And that's what we need to be focusing on now. How can we fertilize magic in our lives? And what are we going to invest our time, effort, energy and space into? Because whatever that is will bring us the abundance, the reward whatever it is we wish to attract. Um, and then when I uh, put the pack down, I, this was at the bottom of the deck. So there we have the confirmation of the bee again. And what I love is now is this landscape portal is about uh, starting to create our new beginning. We have this blank canvas, comic uh, clearing has been happening. Things are crashing down and breaking all around us. Like um, really feels like big towel moments and a lot of crisis and chaos. But like Nietzsche says, uh, a dancing star is born in chaos. And so a chance, it's about taking a leap of faith um, and chance believing in yourself, self-confidence, self-belief, trusting in your dreams, believing in your dreams, um, really shutting out all the noise. And yes, we have loved ones around us who love to guide us, but often inadvertently what they're doing is superimposing their limitations upon us. So be cautious of not operating under limitations imposed upon us and filters. Rather consider yourself to be the seed of pure potentiality that you are now going to be planting in this fertile ground that you have created and are tending to. And the quote is by Catherine well, hey, and it says, the best career advice to give to the young is find out what you like doing best and get someone to pay you for doing it. And that is the advice I have been giving my young uh, fledgling daughter who is going out into the world and finding her way and uh, deciding what uh, value she can add to the world as she goes out into it and uh, experiences it and I just kept saying to follow your the things that interest you do as many things that you enjoy doing there are ways to develop your skills and what happened in my life over time I just kept doing or following doing little courses in all the things sometimes in business I had to do certain courses 
which I realized in, in hindsight, everything just seemed to plug in. And uh, right, right now, my basket of eggs is a really beautiful Easter egg, which is also again about fertility and new beginnings. So that, those were some beautiful confirmations. And if I just show you what tarot cards came out today, uh, in the past position, it's the Six of Cups. And so what I'm loving again, notice all the yellow in the cards. They really seem to, uh, I posted a picture on Instagram under Andy Starlight Guide, if you want to see how much yellow with all these key points. So there is the four. That's what we're trying to achieve, the foundations of our life. Balance. Um, equanimity is the word that's coming to mind. Um, and we are truly at a crossroads. And like I said, comically, so there's one cup that pays uh, homage to the homage to the past, saying goodbye to the things, habits, people, places, situations, patterns, programmings that no longer serve us um, and uh, detract us from seeing our potential and the castles and the dream right before us. And what we need to be doing is in the present, offering our cup of love to new opportunities, to fresh things. Um, many tarot card, traditionally, uh, when I watch readings, many tarot readers refer to this as um, hooking up with someone from your past again. So um, you can add that in if you want. Um, I prefer to um, always read a card, what it means here and now. So I feel like that is you offer your cup of love to your inner self, that that seed of pure potentiality. Um, um, you focus on uh, what brings you great joy. And yes, focus on you here and now is what I'm reading. And give yourself love for any mistakes that led to that. And give yourself a cup of love. We're needing a lot of self-love, acceptance and forgiveness. Um, at the moment. And with that, we will have open our eyes to see the depth of our amazing being and what we're actually capable of and what's possible. Um, so, yeah, then in the current, it was the Three of Cups, which again, I love that it's Cups again because it, it's all about um, passion and following your heart, you know, the, the solar plexus chakra falls just under the heart. So we can really use those in how we express ourselves in the world, what we can bring to the world. You know, like, wow, uh, we can be ferocious lion um, or uh, we can be a, a playful cat. So this card really speaks to me about the alignment of your trinity, body, mind and spirit, when you really operate from love and having all your parts operate harmoniously um, it's like a celebration of life. It's almost this beginning of Tantra, the, the base, the root point of Tantric um, elements of experiencing life. It's fruitful. Um, so it's quite a hopeful card. And I think right now, three, it talks about really back to basics, back to basics. And then if we look forward, beautiful card to get, there we go, more cups again, all about the heart space. Um, queen of cups, that's you being the queen of uh, your heart. And, uh, you know, you, your cup is a trophy. It it's, uh, doesn't need water. It has all the elements. It's uh, alchemical. It's magical. Uh, there's peace, calm, quiet, and... Uh, I'm seeing mermaids, so it's really having learned to uh, be human in, uh, you know, really manage our deep emotions, our spiritual, mental, within the human uh, dense framework. And what's coming to mind as I'm talking about the mermaid and that concept is I was, oh yes, I posted on my Facebook page, Nikki B Wellness, a talk about how psychiatry has been misleading us and there's a false program and I, I think it's a, a worthwhile watching and what this um, qualified professional commented on about his own profession was that 
um, it seemed that uh, there was this tendency to give people labels for discomforts and diseases that are actually very natural human emotional and mental experiences. And, you know, he didn't say this. That was what he said. Go and watch it if you want to see them all. What I want to add to that is what I find is it plays into that whole program, as does medicine, as does insurance, as does legalese, um, and all those systems all seem to play into the system of absolving us of accountability, self-accountability, self-responsibility, denying our true, um, our deep truths, that the dark ones, uh, where we're truly honest with ourselves about who and what we are, not what we're projecting and presenting to the world in order to see back, to say, hey, yes, that plays into what I believe I am or wish to be. Um, it's more now about really going into the self and understanding what, who and what you are. And then I like to, just as um, clarifying cards between the um, past and the present, I like the clarifying card was, um, so if you can settle your karmic debt and raise any negative, or clear out any negative vibration, raise your vibration out of any really dense, low vibrational beings, I think you will find you will be getting many blessings. And this week what I've experienced is I have too acted out in ego and anger. And every not every time it doesn't happen very often, but when it does, I, I, it confirms for me that that is not an energy I enjoy being in. It just, I don't feel good in my body. I don't feel functional. And so I um, have coping mechanisms and rules that I use in order to help me process my ego and my anger. And um, there are about five ways. So I start with one and I work through all of them. And by the time I'm done, I don't often even need to use all of them, two or three, one, sometimes enough. But uh, every time I've managed to consciously focus on raising the vibration and not become a fucker in the face of fuckery, I have received the blessing and it's been comically, it has paid off very quickly. So to those of you who are blessing me, I'm truly grateful. Thank you. I'm truly grateful for my many blessings. And then the card that linked us from focusing on the basics and um, getting to the Queen of Hearts where we really feel like we've won in life, we've got the trophy and our wishes fulfilled, was my card, the star card, age of Aquarius, sage of Aquarius, in the starlight guide, that's why I chose uh, my name, in the starlight guide, in for my initials, starlight guide, because well, there you go, the star. So it's like there is the portal, there is Sirius. Um, it's about finding balance for folks. Sorry, monkey in the house. Hey, get up. They're very invasive. On last week, they apologies for the interruption. They got in while I was out and smashed. That's why I'm saying chaos and everywhere. So if you're not releasing your karma or dealing with your karma, the universe will uh, bring tower moments upon you. Yes. So they wreaked havoc in my uh, kitchen and broke a lot of jars, but they were old jars. They're useful, but I am releasing any energies that uh, any most things in my life that have anything to do with my life up until this point I'm trying to replace with new clean energy to let that old energy that's stagnant with those uh, possessions um, I'm letting them go so back to the star card so it's about shining your light brightly and it's 17 and um, what I love is uh, one and seven and eight, eight. So that's about finding a uh, perfect balance. It's that infinity symbol. Eight means as above, so below. As below, so above. 
And um, what if we break it up though and look at the numbers as in one and seven, we get the confirmation of look at all the ones. So there is the one of chance. And I just realized now ace is a one. So again, do you see all this beautiful synchronicity of uh, using the energies of now to be very clear, right? Business plans, uh, mind map, uh, journal, do whatever you can just to create a blueprint at the very least. But really, we can't get very far with a little action. So yes, it's good to have a longer term plan. But um, in order to get to the longer term plan, which is the elephant, we need to take uh, bite-sized pieces, which is the shorter-term action plans. We don't really need to worry too much about bridging that gap. What we need to worry on, like I said, is the here and now, um, back to basics. And uh, so that's pretty much as much as I can tell you about the cards and Lionsgate portal. And it's funny, I'll tell you about the lemon now. So... Uh, I, one of the other things that came through in the week was about, um, again, reference to this planet being the Garden of Eden and us being the Adams and the Eves of this Garden of Eden and how we've completely lost sight of that. And I, I'm really believing that uh, between all the information, between what the planet is telling us, between what the cosmos is telling us, between um, what our ancestors are telling us, what our wise elders are telling us, um, what my cat's butthole is telling us, um, is that we really need to pay attention to what's actually going on and real eyes. We, we've been living in this illusion and delusion, but truly things are quite dire. And we are um, needing to pay attention to this Garden of Eden thing. So I wanted to tell a story about the apple uh, and Eve passing the apple to Adam and then eating from this tree of knowledge. And um, I think, uh, well, I looked in the fridge for an apple because I wanted to show you an apple, but I don't have one. So I pulled out what I had, which is this lemon as an altar. So I won't tell you the story. I'll do that as a, as a separate video because there's actually quite a lot of content and context to that I'd like to add to that um, story of the Garden of Eden and Eve and the apple. But I love that what I pulled out happened to be yellow, which fit in with our color theme and in every way, chakra, astrologically, um, yeah, on a constellation basis. So, yeah, very, very cool how all of this happened. The only other thing I haven't shown you is the shawl, which is the last thing that I have on this page, certainly to share with you, is I picked up this shawl on the beach the other day. You, you don't get to appreciate it for the beauty and the amount of detail there is in the shades of brown and there's patterns and um, it's got this lovely texture where you could see its journey on its growth, where it had literally bumps in the road and it had to strengthen and then it had easier time and it became weaker. But if, so this is a bit like the way of saying we really can't uh, read a book by its cover. And I did a video on consciousness, the ocean of consciousness. And it's a bit like this. This would be the same as the head bobbing above the ground. You only see one thing. But yet, if you flip things over, put your head in the underside, the flip side, you would see a whole different reality. So again, you can't see this. This shell is iridescent in the light, meaning it's pearlescent. It's showing all the colors of the rainbow. It becomes alive which is what I said in the other video too. If you submerge your head in consciousness and you become more aware, you will see that there is a whole different uh, way of living, existing, perceiving life. Um, it's our way, as we say in uh, my home, origin town, Cape Town. It's our way. So um, that's the show. And I covered everything in the picture 
on Instagram. So there are two other things, I think, that are very important. And it has to do with being sacred and being a sacred being. We seem to have lost all sense of our sacredness and the sacredness of our environment and again the sacredness of this planet and everything that's actually truly essential to us food the right food healthy food not what you buy off a shelf that's been stored and processed but living food that grew by the sun so you can consume the energy of the sun and uh, walking barefoot and feeling the ground and drinking fresh water and uh, breathing fresh and drinking fresh water breathing fresh air um, life seems quite toxic and um, it's coming to my awareness lately um, this matter of I saw a thing on Netflix it happened to someone very close to me and as I've been talking to people about it I'm just hearing about it everywhere I've, yeah it's just everywhere which tells me that it's out of control this whole idea of drugging people, particularly women and particularly young women, and then taking advantage of them and in many instances sexually violating them. And violation means they did not give informed consent. Western medicine, one of the things I learned in nursing, one of the uh, frameworks and certainly most basic when you go to hospital for an, um, any procedure that you ever have, you have to give informed consent meaning someone explained the whole procedure to you, they explained the pros, the cons, uh, so that you truly understood what was going to happen, and you then were able to make a decision based on the facts that were presented to you. We assume always, um, well, I think it's just common decency to believe that, or to provide all the information available to you, and if you are a, a offering a service, you certainly should, should have done enough research, practice, skills development, self-development in order to make yourself aware of all, certainly the cons, because that's probably more people need to know that what they have to gain, but what they have to lose. And I find that's often hidden from us and we don't get to truly make informed consent. We're often bullied into situations and this is just another version of that, but in a different uh, sphere. And so uh, my one, I have three rules I live by. And if you don't mind, I'll share them with you because it just makes um, being a decent fucking human being quite simple. In that, rule number one is live with love. I'm not sure you need 10 commandments if you are living with love. It means you're being kind and caring and compassionate and empathetic, uh, supportive, nurturing, you know, uh, considerate. Yeah, so live with love, rule number one. Number two, mm, a bit, uh, well, number two is uh, informed consent. So give me all the facts, all the figures, all the information I need in order to uh, make a decision that means I can not only commit to myself, but to you too. And then number three, a bit controversial, is there are no rules, um, just don't get caught. So it's like there are a lot of laws and what have you, but actually there are a lot more rules which are really there for, are supposed, supposed to be there for guidance to um, guide us into living harmoniously together and cooperatively. However, they've become these really strict rules and these structures have all been based upon this and now we don't seem to be accountable or responsible for owning up to living like a decent person. And these, the, the example of this are many. In my profession and what I do is um, I work by appointment and I schedule things and um, I expect once I've provided you with a service or a product, you pay me uh, pretty much promptly, immediately, cash on delivery. And these days you rely on uh, electronic means of payment. 
So you give people the grace period of being able to access their devices, computers, whatever. And uh, so you trust in good faith that uh, it will be sorted out promptly without you follow up. And uh, what happens is people don't and one has to chase people for payment. And um, either don't, yeah, I, there are a lot of things I could talk about. I won't go into any negative energy. We are raising our vibration and being positive um, instead of negative. So I also notice people don't arrive on time. And here's the thing. You cannot ask of others what you yourself are unable to uh, deliver or do, I believe, anywhere. So I will say that, um, one, I usually arrive early because I like to, by the time you and I need to engage in whatever it is, I want to be cool, calm, collected and ready for action. So um, I operate according to rather be early and on time. And if I can't, and if for whatever reason there's a delay or hiccup, I do my best to communicate with the person. And I don't say, oh, well, uh, these are the things that are, are preventing me. I just say, uh, I'm late. I'm either going to be there and when I'm going to be there by, and I communicate what I can, but not, I don't explain my circumstances. We don't care. They don't need to know that. What they need is how does it, how, discuss with them what, you need, uh, or how it affects them, be considerate of them, and uh, understand how what's happening to you is affecting them. So I find people don't do that. They get so caught up in their own drama, they have no idea of the shrapnel effect on all the people around them in various ways. So it's inappropriate to be late uh, or not show up without communicating. Um, it's rude and disrespectful, and people need to stop doing that. Um, and people also need to work on uh, improving communication, which means answering the question. Stop explaining why you can't. Start explaining how you can. Uh, again, how you can't is not other people's problem. It's your problem to solve. What they need to hear is how you can. So I notice a lot of that. People ask me to consider them and give them a lot of leeway for all their chaos, but they are not understanding that the chaos of their lives is having on my life, meaning I have uh, taken time to set up for you or prepare for you, uh, all of that, but yet for you, you just discarded it, and in my life, it actually impacts my bottom line. So we need to start being more considerate of people is a big theme. Uh, what happens to you matters to you, but please remember that there is a ripple effect, and remember the ripple. and be aware and operate according to um, kindness and care to that. Um, the other message that so informed consent is a very big theme we need to be working on. I'm pretty sure many of those uh, women, I would be curious to hear, I would like to even hear of one woman who doesn't feel in some way in her life she's been sexually violated in some way um, it is an issue and again everything boils down to informed consent because everything in life is a poison or a medicine it it just depends on the dosage and i'm pretty sure that all those uh, people who uh, felt it was appropriate to put or any any time whether you put weed in um, in an edible whether you uh, put mushies in something. I don't know. There are any form ways of uh, giving people drugs without their knowledge. And it's really unacceptable to do that. Uh, you must allow people to make their own choices about what they put in their body and what they do with their bodies in the same way you do. Um, you really cannot drug people in order to have sex with them and do what, whatever it is for it is not okay. If they give you their permission, if you had said, hey, chick, I'm going to put some um, roofie in your drink here, and then later when you feel unconscious, I'm just going to have my way with you. How about that? Who's going to say yes? You might get the odd one, but how about you give us the choice? 
uh, you might find there's more compliance than even I am giving allowance for. What I'm saying is you cannot give people things without their consent or do things to people without their consent. That is you playing God. No, that needs to end. And in a world where people don't take self-responsibility and aren't self-accountable, it just seems to play into that, that whole um, fear cycle and uh, it must end. And I'm not sure entirely what we can do about it. I have some ideas, but please can we raise awareness and start to think about how we can solve this problem and keep women and especially our daughters safe because right now they're very vulnerable and there are many stories we're not hearing about anyway moving on uh the other message that came up was do no harm so when we're working with all this magic you are all powerful um, you are sacred and all life is sacred and um we in order to honor that and bring that aliveness back to our life to bring a richness and our fullness to our lives we need to think about adding ritual and ceremony and this was brought to my consciousness a couple of weeks back by um, a sister Sangom, a friend of mine who was saying that was what she felt in her life and it has been something i have been thinking and been doing more in my life and it seems now that the way we can bring back sacredness is to uh, bring back ceremony and ritual. And it's simple things. <laughs> not I'm not talking about those ayahuasca ceremonies and nothing big and dramatic and out there is that. It's simple things like uh, when you wake up in the morning, the first breath you take, perhaps you could have the thought of saying, thank you for this day or giving gratitude for something. Uh, I feel good, thank you. Um, I'm excited to wake up today. So that is a ritual. Then, uh, so any form of gratitude, journaling, reading, any form of having a morning routine, breathing and meditating for 10, 15, 20 minutes, uh, reading something for 10 minutes that you will then spend the day contemplating on. So I do tarot, that's my way of doing tarot cards, is that's in the same way some people would open a Bible and read or read a daily message book. These are all just different ways of ceremony and ritual, but they're important to, you must structure them into your life and kind of, this is where self-discipline is, is that you must do them regularly because it's only the sum total of continuity, the accumulation of the energy and the habit forming of those things that really um, give you the greatest uh, benefits of all of them plugging in together and working with you to be the magnificence of all that you are. So um, everything you could, there's making a cup of tea or coffee that, or whatever it is that you do, uh, slow it down a little bit and pay attention to what you're doing and give thanks for access to clean water, give thanks for um, whatever the, the conveniences that allow you to be having this experience, eating the food you're eating, perhaps that's giving grace. So blessing the food and water you, you're consuming before you do so um, amplifies the energy and uh, putting intention to something you're feeding yourself is a way of nourishing yourself on a mental, emotional, spiritual sense, not just the body. Um, and remember, anytime you make magic again, do no harm please, uh, not to yourself and not to others. And oftentimes when you are harming yourself, you are ripple effect, domino effect again, shrapnel, others are being harmed by your negative energy. Um, so please be aware that our brain from a higher vibrational state, which is about love, where you engage um, your heart into all your chakras, the accumulation of the energy and lessons of all of those and you diffuse all negative energy with love for yourself and for others and everyone's doing their best where they are here and now with what they have and um, we are all in a different space place time state condition and 
we need to remember to hold tolerance for others as we do for ourselves. In fact, anything we do for ourselves will become a natural way of being with others. Um, so if there is some ways you can introduce ceremony and ritual into your life, then um, I encourage that. So all these things I've been talking about, if you want a, an immersion experience, um, either physically in person, that is possible. Alternatively, we can do it via Zoom, uh, WhatsApp chat, any one of the various four formats that there are. It is possible to connect via a distance. Energy doesn't recognize space, time, distance. <laughs> um, it recognizes intention. Um, it can be manipulated with means to amplify it. So if you'd like to learn more of these tools, I'm actually starting tomorrow morning, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. on the beach. Um, I'm inviting people to join me so we can create a gathering. We're going to learn stress management techniques. Um, we're going to learn how to breathe better. We're going to learn how to visualize. It won't all happen tomorrow, but over time, these are the things I'm hoping to introduce you to, a more tantric state of being, which is really about tapping into um, yourself as a sen sensory and sensational being. So becoming aware of all your senses and then how to uh, make those all work harmoniously so that you become a sixth sense being. And um, it's a much more comfortable way to live life. You can be more relaxed because your head, heart and gut will always work with you to say, hey, pay attention, trouble, or hey, whatever, red flag, red flag. So we'll start to become more aware of those. And then we'll also learn how to deal with when we are triggered or when those red flags happen, how we can self-manage. Um, we'll learn ground, energetic uh, concepts, grounding, purification, cleansing, protection, balancing, um, and things like that. So uh, there is a lot on offer. All I'm asking is that 9 a.m. you're ready to go. And um, I don't, for those that um, want to only come for a short time, you come and go as you please, just please try not to disrupt the energy. In fact, you're coming and going once the sacred circle has been created, will be disruptive. So if you can commit to an hour, I'll be grateful. We can stay longer if we wish for those who want to um, have some debrief time. Um, it's going to be a set some opportunity. So what I'll be doing is exactly these energies, all these concepts and um, uh, wisdoms that come up, I will then have the opportunity to share with you what's happen happening currently. But we'll be doing it in a live, beautiful live setting, fresh air, maybe sunshine, and a, a chance to commune with uh, in a community format, uh, just gather and share energy and perhaps create, learn some uh, attraction manifest, the, the natural laws of the universe is one of the other uh, themes that I would like to uh, flow into all of this. So it's quite a lot, um, chakras, auras, all of that, but we're going to just do it slowly, calmly, and uh, go with the flow. We're going to be like water, my friends, we're going to be like water, as Bruce Lee tells us. And um, I think to end things now, because this has been long enough, thank you, namaste. Uh, I want to end off with some a quote I heard this morning. The first kind of message that came out was, if it's for me, it's meant to be. If it's meant to be, it's for me. So um, that's a lovely message to end with. I'll see some of you tomorrow. Otherwise, I'm always happy to engage with all of you in whichever way. Um, many blessings and go out there and make some magic. Namaste in the cash. <laughs>